another land transition. If I ask you the question, what does this land mean to you? What would be your answer? We have about 60 people here. There will be about 60 different answers, I guess. But maybe we can find some common denominator. Some of us will say that this is a time of repentance. Is that right? The time to come back. The time for fasting. Some would say that the time for changing. And also some say, might say that this is a time for giving up. Now that's a great thing that only in America I learned about it. Every time Lent and season, people just try to give up something so that at the end they double it. Okay, <laughs> take it back, whatever they haven't, they already give up during the time. I say it's not the time of giving up alone. That's your own effort to show God that this is my desire to do something good for you. That's great. But that's not simple like that. It's time for coming back. Great. Okay. But why do we have to wait until Lent and season to come back to God? The time for repentance? Wow. So what about the rest of the year? <laughs> okay. And in 40 days, we will celebrate the highlight of this Lenten season. Do you know what it is? Before Easter, what would it be? The Triduum. The Passion of Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he sent his only son into the world so to save them. Now remember the story that Adam and Eve, from the beginning, they decided to walk away from God. God gave them every possibility, and even God had desire for them to stay with me, to enjoy the paradise, the fullness of life. But they decided to walk away. And for that reason, from the very beginning, from day one, God already planned and keeps searching to bring them back. And the only plan that he can do is to send his son into the world, to become one of them, to teach them, to show them the way to come back to him. And then that son also have to die for, for them. That is God's love. The love that will never stop. The love continue to search. The love continue to bring us back to him. So today we celebrate this love. There are so many things to talk about love, especially the love of God. But I want to focus on three characters, three major characters about the love of God. So the first one, I will talk about that God Instead of abandon us, the love of God continues to remain in us. And the second one, God does not condemn us for whatever the sin that we made, not just Adam and Eve alone, but all of us. But he continued to reconcile. He continued to open the door of hope so that we can live this life again to the fullness. And the third thing I will talk about how love transformed the beloved. Okay? So, love does not abandon us. Think about it. Jesus at the Last Supper, his life was the example of how God broke into the human history, tried to be with us, tried to be with us, and tried to help us. But then at the Last Supper, Jesus knew that this is my time. And he decided, I want to be with you. He established what? The Eucharist. On that Eucharist, that's what Jesus said. Do this and remember me. And from now on, I will be with you till the end of time. Every time we go into the church or into any chapel, we know that the tabernacle represent for God present among us. And if we reflect back into the Old Testament, God chose to be with his people in the tent as well. 
God dwell among his people. That's God's happiness. As long as his heart can be with his people, God loves it. And today, he continues to be with us in tabernacle, in the church, in the temple, in wherever that we can to worship him. God remains with us, but sometimes we have to ask ourselves how many times that I remember, I'm aware that God is still remain in me. God still remain with us. How do we treat mass in our life? Think about it. Adoration is on the time that we can be closer to God. How often we take advantage of that. So maybe at the beginning of this Lenten season, this is opportunity for us to reflect about it, to think about it. I want to move on to the second character that we want to talk about. Now, God never, he never, never, never condemns us. Remember, there's several multiple stories in the Bible that would help us. The first story I can remember is that in John chapter 8, the adultery woman, she was caught and she was brought in front of everyone and in front of Jesus. What did Jesus do? He did not say a word. He helped those who condemn her to understand, am I innocent? Am I holy enough? Who am I to condemn the other? But at the end, what did he do? He told her what? Go and sin no more. Me too. I will not judge you. I will not condemn you. Go and sin no more. God always opened another door, a door of hope, a door so that the person can stand up, can make it anew again in her life or his life. In the same way, another story that uh, in Luke chapter 7, Simon, one of the Pharisees, invited Jesus for dinner. But he didn't care about how to treat Jesus by offering him the water for washing. But that woman, from the first moment she appeared until at the end, she did not say a word. What did she do? She cried the whole time. She washed his feet with her own tear. What did Jesus say? Those who love more will be forgiven more. And go in peace, your sins are forgiven. Repentance deep from the bottom of her heart changed Jesus and allowed Jesus to invite her to move on with her life. And even Jesus defended her in front of other people. The third example, the prodigal son, the famous one that we all know about. It. But I'm not going to detail, I'm just think, I'm just asking you to imagine that young man, after many days of hungry, after walking a long distance, he smelled badly. He smelled badly. But that father came out, and what did he do? He embraced him. He hugged him. The smell did not stop the father from loving the son. He restored his son to his full dignity to be his son again. Bring out the new shoe, bring out the new clothes, but also put on the ring. The ring that I still save for my son. And now let us kill the calf and celebrate. That's God's joy. When God sees someone to come back, God loves this. No matter what, God loves sinner. God never loves sins, but God loves sinner. That's what St. Ignatius said. So sin should not be something to prevent us to come to God. 
in every case, God always forgive the person. And not only that, His grace erases all of the shame from that person. And He wants the person to become someone different, someone anew, His child again, to be able to live another life, a life to the fullness that He designed for that person. But we also have to remember, although Jesus did not say that, He leave it open. That son, he could decide to stay or he could walk away again. How many times in our life we continue to walk away from God? Think about it. The, sac the sacrament of reconciliation is always work in that way. To invite us to come back to God, to lay out all of our sins, and God accept all of those. God will forgive them, and God will restore us back with His grace to become His children. The church has that sacrament. How often we take advantage, how often we know about it. Because of time limit. So I want to move on to the third character, which is love transform the beloved. Now you remember that chapter 21, which is the add on in John Gospel. People always think that there's only the first 20 chapter with the original one. This is the add on. But there's a very interesting story. The story was that that morning, Peter said that, I'm going back, I'm going to fish. And then six others joined him. So seven of them was on that boat. They could not catch anything. There was some voice in the shore and said, throw the net on the other side. They caught. And then one of them, the beloved, could be John, said that that was him. That was the master. Peter swam into the shore. Remember that? And at that shore, they had breakfast with Jesus. And after that, what did Jesus do? He asked Peter three times, do you love me? Do you love me? Now, a lot of time, or I hear people interpret this one in different way. Because someone just said that Peter denied Jesus three times before. And therefore, this is a time that Jesus carefully confront Peter to remember what you did to me. Do you think Jesus is that kind of person? If he was able to forgive everyone on that cross when he said that, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Does he still have that memory about Peter denying him before? No. Just to make sure that you understand, you know why we say holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts three times holy? Do you know why? This is the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. This is the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God you take away the sins of the world three times. Why? Because in Hebrew language, they don't have the capacity like us. You know, good, bad, best, that is English. They have holy, holier, holiest. But they cannot say it that way because not in their language. Therefore, they said holy, holy, holy three times. Okay, that's just the semantic or semantic of the language. But Jesus asked Peter three times, not only because of the language, but also he continued to open the door for Peter to reflect about his love for Jesus. Jesus wants Peter to have a chance to reaffirm how much he loves Jesus. And we know that every time Jesus I mean, every time Peter confirmed that I love you, what did Jesus do? He gave him a new mission. So he transformed Peter from the one who denied him, the one that who was coward, to become someone new, the new pope of our church, the new leader, the one that who continued for the rest of his life to live, to spread the good news, the gospel, and die even on the cross upside down. So Jesus transformed the person by his love. 
I want you to think about it. Each of us here, we are God's beloved as well. God loves each of us the same way God loves Peter. Do you think he wants to transform you as well? This Lenten season, I would ask you to use this time as a time to reflect on God's love for you. God loves each of us from the very first day of our life. God continues to present in our life. God is helping each of us so that we can live this life better. And his presence we can understand through Jesus Christ. And again, the three major that char characters of love that we have been focusing on is that love choose to remain. Love remains in us through the Eucharist. And God, God's love always opens the door for us to become someone anew, someone better, so that we can live this life to the fullness. And also love transforms the beloved. Do we let God transform us 